and welcome to the Author Roundup, a special segment of the Book Connection Show where we meet up-and-coming indie authors and talk to them about their recently released books. Hello and welcome to Author Roundup. I'm your host, Jenny. And today, we'll be talking to another indie author. She was honored as the international cover story for December 2023 of the American Paranormal Magazine for her ability to see and capture spirits and orbs in photographs and videos. She has been featured on television and various podcasts for her abilities. And now, she has a book out that will not only explain what her life has been like as a medium, but will also provide her readers with hope and evidence of the afterlife. Her book contains over 70 amazing and intriguing photos, unlike any you've seen before. So a teacher and evidential psychic medium, please welcome our special guest, the author of the book, There Is No Death, Evidence of the Spirit World, Spirits and Orbs, Suzanne Ahrens. Hi, Suzanne. Welcome to Author Roundup. I'm glad that you can join us today. Thank you, Jenny. It's an honor to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of a lot of interesting inclusions in your book. So it just recently came out. I understand it just came out like a few months ago, right? That's correct. Uh, yes. So your book, There Is No Death, can you tell us something more about it? Yeah, uh, it's my first book and um, I am an evidential psychic medium. And so it talks about my journey, a little bit about my journey and about how I connect to the spirits in the afterlife. Uh, and it provides, most importantly, it provides proof of the afterlife. I've got, as you mentioned, dozens and dozens, over 70 amazing, unique mm -hmm. photographs of the spirit world. Mm -hmm. So I think people will really enjoy reading the book and seeing the evidence. Okay, so before I go and ask questions about your book. You mentioned that you are a medium, right? And yeah, so can you tell us more about that? I'm sure not a lot of people knows how it is. Like, how does it affect you, your daily life and all that? Oh, good question. Well, growing up, this wasn't a thing. I'm a farm girl from Minnesota, and this wasn't anything that we were talked about or watched on television. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, I just thought I was having really intense deja vu. In fact, I'd always tell people, oh, another deja vu moment, mm -hmm. not realizing those were actually premonitions. So it wasn't until I got older. And actually, when my husband and I lost, lost our first daughter, she passed away, is when I started demanding answers. And I started mm -hmm. doing a lot more research into the afterlife. And, and near-death experiences. And I grabbed a hold of one of Dr. Raymond Moody's bo books. And it really kind of was the catalyst that got the whole thing rolling. I see. So this is not something that you just learned or developed over the years. So it's, it's something that you already have. And yeah, I, I was born with the abilities. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I had them or didn't understand mm -hmm. what they were until I started doing more research. And then I actually took a lot of training, a lot of classes from instructors all over the world, from very prestigious organizations that helped me hone in my abilities. So this is a gift. Was it difficult to accept this gift since it's it's not the usual abilities or skills, right? Someone gets scared of it. Yeah, I know that. I can understand that. That's a good question. But uh, no, I, actually, it was a huge relief. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, thank goodness, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. So for me, no, I've, I've very much embraced it. I've never had a moment where I was scared or nervous. I, I enjoy every aspect of it, even capturing the evidence. I find it absolutely intriguing and I, I, I love it. And so for me, it just seemed like a natural progression, mm -hmm. which I'm very, very grateful that I have been gifted with these abilities. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned, or I mentioned in introduction, that you are a teacher. Uh, I mean, the classes that you teach, are they somehow related to this ability? Well, twofold, actually, I guess. I'm a college instructor, and I've been teaching 11 years at one of our state colleges, but I also teach spirit for photography, and oh. we'll have presentations that people can attend or hire me to, to put on for their event. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now you have a book. And so what inspired you to write this book? Oh, believe it or not. So from a teacher um, 
medium but just and like a year before it came out i told somebody somebody's going to ask me to write a book and i said oh me write a book no 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 uh, but spirit had other plans and they said yes you are and here's a class you're going to take and learn how to do it oh and here's another class and oh you need to watch this video and here's a tutorial they just kept bombarding me till i realized okay I, I i get what you're saying and in fact they they've encouraged me they've made it possible and they're the ones who have actually provided me with the evidence that i put in the book okay and what was your inspiration aside from them prodding you to write the book are there events in your life that inspired you to write this book or uh, yeah it uh, there has been and the book ended up being a combination of all sorts of things like like things that have happened to me in my life uh, that other people might be able to relate to like mother's intuition you know most of us know when our children are sick even if the doctors say it's not right yeah. and to listen to that inner voice I talk about you know that intuitive being you know where sometimes we feel like we know something's about to happen we don't understand why we feel a certain mm -hmm. way or say you're driving home from work one day and you decide you want to take this other route and then when you get home and you turn on the news you realize oh my goodness thank good you goodness you did there was a major car accident that blocked the road but because you got that knowing you turned and went away a different way home and, and you avoided it. And so I think a lot of people can relate to that. But most importantly, spirit wants people to know there is no death, right? Mm -hmm. Our souls live on. And so if people could just understand that when we lose somebody that we love dearly, they're not gone forever. In fact, the book provides evidence that your loved ones are very much still around you. Mm -hmm. And still part of your life, even though you might not see them anymore. I use this kind of analogy. I say, well, you know, it's one of those things that I am Suzanne Arns. I am in this vessel right now. I get into a white SUV. Well, eventually mm -hmm. that car is going to get too many miles on it. And it's going to go to the scrapyard. I still mm -hmm. exist, but now I'm going to have to get myself a new ride. Mm. Our souls are like that. Currently, our souls are residing in these forms. You look like you do. I look like I do. But eventually, mm. these vessels, these vehicles are going to have too many miles on them and they're going to go to the scrapyard. And we still exist, but now we're without a ride. And if people mm. could just understand that our loved ones, whether they be two-legged or four-legged, they are still very much around. And the book provides that evidence. That's very interesting. So the orbs that you mentioned would be the manifestation of what you, or this is the representation of the souls. Is that it? Yeah, very much. They all appear. In fact, I've captured a couple of videos of, we had a couple of pet ducks and uh, they're wild ducks, but we saved them, rescued them and whatnot. So they became family to us and uh, we love them very much. And I will catch them flying around in my bedroom and even outside our house on our deck. And some of that can be found on my social media platforms and on my website. I put a lot of that kind of content out there for people to see. I'm just interested. How would you know that it's them? Do they somehow communicate it to you or? Well, sometimes I ask for them. I, I will literally call them by name and I will ask them to step forward. Other mm -hmm. times, in fact, I just released a little video on this. We had a dog that mm -hmm. had a real close call of death. She got extremely ill. And uh, but she survived. But when we brought her home from the vet, she started acting peculiar. She would stand at the edge of the kitchen in the dark and just start barking like she's having a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. And she did this every single night for like five, six days. till finally, I thought, what in the world is she barking at? And then it dawned on me. Oh, my gosh. I bet she sees through the veil now. I bet she sees the other side and she's talking to our dog, Toby, who she loved very much. So I grabbed my, my cell phone and I went to the kitchen and I said, and I turned on my video recording and I could see some spirits flying and we've had a lot of animals. And I said, Toby, if that's you, can you come in a color? Mm, okay. <laughs> and then I realized I don't think dogs see color. Why would I ask them that? <laughs> Next thing I know, though, I caught an orb and it went from white to green to pink to purple to oh. blue to green. It went through I the think... rainbows of colors that are through, through, flew through. So I have no doubt that was him. And you caught it in camera. Oh, yeah. And I shared it. It's on my social media platform. I just oh. released it the other day. So, yeah, I get that kind of all the time. One time I was in the bedroom and I, we were getting ready to take a trip. And so I had all bunch of stuff sitting out and I was standing there and I got this feeling that I'm, I'm not alone. And so I grabbed my camera and I started filming. And it was my cat, Victoria, who has passed away. 
And I said, Victoria, is this you? And she came right up to me. It's all on camera. And just what do cats do? They wrap around your legs, right? Yeah. Up like mm -hmm. it. That's what she did. She wrapped around, went through my legs. I turned around to catch her and she shot up the wall and then shot back the other way. So I have no doubt that was Victoria. In fact, sometimes I've asked them, you know, dad, if this is you, can you come in a color? And all of a sudden a pink orb will go by. Mm -hmm. So those are things that you too have the ability to do. And I teach it in the book. Okay, that's very interesting. And their nuances when they were still alive, I guess that would somehow still be there or? The personalities, because, you mean? Yeah, or, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, very much. So, you know, here's an example I can give you. So <laughs> this young man apparently was a bit of a jokester when he was alive and the family came for a reading. And the young man let me know that he was haunting his family. <laughs> and I thought, what? And he started telling me how he would flick the lights and he was throwing things in his dad's garage to try to catch his attention, these type of things. I thought that was flipping hilarious. Mm -hmm. And so then the son and spirit let me know that, oh, my dad has a picture of me on his phone of him in spirit. Mm -hmm. And I asked the father this and he goes, no, no, I don't. And the daughter goes, oh my God, dad. Yes, you do. I told you that was him. I told you it was him. <laughs> and the son said to me, you can get a picture of me right now. And I said, oh, just a second. And I grabbed my phone and I stood back in the corner of the, the, the room and I said, okay, go past your dad right now. And I filled him flying right past his dad. Mm -hmm. And I showed it to him, which of course, you know, brought him to tears, but yeah. So they're very much still around. In fact, they very much know what's going on in your life. And so do your pets that pass into spirit. So it's just unfortunately that, it's unfortunate that more people can't see them like I can, but mm -hmm. you should maybe be able to sense them. And if nothing else, a lot of my clients will say, well, I'm always calling them and they never come. They never give me a sign. And then the person in spirit will go, yeah, I do all the time. I did this and this and this. And when I start telling my clients about that, they're like, oh, that, that was them. And then they realize. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, what do you expect they were going to do? You know, <laughs> Come across your TV. You know what I mean? So that's where sometimes the reach from the spirit world is very soft and people will often disregard it yes yeah also because of the noise all around us nowadays yeah. Yeah, i think true. that just makes it harder okay so the book that you wrote is very personal to you right i know you mentioned that you have shared some or a lot of your close encounters with death right so without spoiling the book can you tell us something about those experiences that you shared yeah you know it's one of those things that I think what it really boils down to is mm -hmm. you know your body better than any doctor okay and a, and a good friend of mine is a doctor a physician and she once reminded me Suzanne it says practicing medicine it's because we're still practicing medicine we're still learning we're still practicing we don't have all the answers Mm -hmm. And I used to think, you know, doctors were gods and that they had all the answers. And mm -hmm. I've learned the hard way that they're just human beings like the rest of us. And mm -hmm. that if you go to a doctor and he doesn't say something that really resonates with you, that makes sense to you, like inside you, when it mm -hmm. doesn't resonate, then get another opinion. And if you have to get a, a third opinion, keep getting opinions that will then resonate and make sense to you. And because I didn't always listen to the doctors, it cost me my daughter's life and about because I listened to him and, and instead of go, uh, going with my gut instinct. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where it was a little frustrating because he was the head of pediatrics at one of our big hospitals. Mm -hmm. I thought, surely he knows what he's doing. And I told him what was wrong with my daughter. I told him that she wasn't breathing right and that there was something wrong. And he didn't even bother doing a chest x-ray. He says, no, no, she's just fine. And I was in tears. I was pleading with him. And I said, no, no, I'm telling you, there's something really, really wrong. No, no, you're just overreacting. You're a first time mother. She died the very next morning in the daycare. And the autopsy had proved she had pneumonia. So, you know, you learn real quick that you need to believe in yourself, listen to yourself and go with your gut instincts. And I think all of us really have that to a certain extent. We might not always listen to it, but I do think we have that. And because of that, it has saved my own life numerous times mm -hmm. where doctors said it was nothing. And I was literally having serious heart problems. And by the time they caught it, they rushed me into heart surgery. You know what I mean? But for a year and a half, no doctor would listen to me. 
You know what I mean? It's the cancers. I've had lots of kinds of cancers and doctors for one of them wanted to send me to physical therapy. Mm-hmm. I said, I, no, <laughs> I'm going to seek somebody that's going to listen to me. And I did. And it ended up being a Herthel cell, which is always fatal if it's not caught in time. And mm-hmm. usually by the time they catch it, you've got less than two months to live. So right. again, it was those type of things. And I talk about it just a little bit, little short stories in the book, just so people can relate and have a better understanding about how we all are a little bit intuitive. Some of us mm-hmm. obviously are more than others, but, yeah. but we all have that ability to listen to ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So if you can share to our viewers and our listeners as well, earlier you were reading to me a part of your book, right? And um, I would want them to to hear that too, or if you can, if you can read that to us now. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, sure, absolutely. Here's just a short little excerpt from it. My family had left to go home and I was alone in the room. At some point in the night, I apparently received too strong a dosage of pain medication and I stopped breathing again. I'm not really sure how much time had passed before I took my next breath. All I know is enough time had that when I finally took a breath again, it felt like I was breathing fire. The next thing I knew, the nurse who had been working the floor that night came running into my room, grabbed me by the shoulders and started shaking me, telling me to breathe. Breathe, breathe. By then, of course, I was, and I told her so. I'm not sure shaking me would have brought me back from death's door, but she was giving it one heck of a try. So that was just one of many surgeries I've had where I stopped breathing in surgery, and they had to keep me going for, I think it was three hours until I was able to breathe on my own again. And then later that night, they left me alone, and they only had one nurse on the entire floor. Mm -hmm. So I was unsupervised and lights out again. So spirit, though, has kept me alive. And I think that's the premise of all these stories is that, you know, the moral of the story was, is that spirit has kept me going. I I should have died many times over, but I agreed to do something in this lifetime. And apparently they're going to make darn sure I do it, which (laughs) is getting the word out that there really is no death. Right. It's a very hopeful, you know, thing to say to us that, you know, our loved ones would leave, would live on just in another form or in another vessel. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and so this book, that's like a collection or a, it's all about the experiences you've had and the abilities and your encounters with the, with the orbs and all that. How long did it take you to write this book? Believe it or not, it only just took a couple of months. It just kind of all flowed out I, I actually can't even take the credit I really think it was all them because I believe I possess the ability to write a book so I have to give spirit all the credit so but then it took many more months doing a lot of research trying to determine okay am I going to self-publish this am I going to go to a publisher house and so by the time I found Archway Publishing then it took many more months so it's I think a year in total so can you share to us some anecdotes you have like when you were writing the book like you said the spirits would somehow be helping you along the way? Yeah, that was kind of interesting to me. You know, I, I, I got an email about a free writing course. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. oh, that, that's interesting. But I hire writers. I, you know, I run a advertising and marketing company uh, I have for 38 years. And so I hire people to do that stuff. So, so I'm like, so where oh, did the email come from? I, I guess just a, an organization that, hey, hey house, I think it was. And so I thought, oh, okay. And I blew it off. But you're not interested to write at all? No, I really had no interest. So I blew it off. And then it came again Mm -hmm. and again. And then I seen it on social media, the same thing over and over. I just kept getting bombarded with it. I thought, okay, okay. I, I, I guess I'm supposed to check this out. Okay, I'll check it out. And it was fun. It was just a free three-day thing, little sample, get, you know, put your toe in the water. And I'm like, oh, no, it's kind of fun. Next thing you know, here's another one and another one and another mm-hmm. one. So I ended up signing up for them all going, okay, I guess this is what I'm supposed to do. And then the process just took off. But I will tell you, <laughs> I've done a lot of research. I've taken a lot of classes, even one-hour classes, one-day classes, all these things that I paid for, others that were free. They're all different and you can learn something from all of them. And I would encourage anybody that's considering writing to take as many of these classes and courses as you can, because I did not understand (laughs) the journey that I was about to embark on. It was monumental to say the least. You know, you, you sit in these classes and then some talk about how you have to have an agent before you even 
find a publisher yeah. and that, I mean it's just this whole litany of things and then you have all these different types of writers right you've got your draft writers and your copywriters and you got a finish writer I mean and I'm thinking what you know and so I thought I was supposed to engage all these people to do all these things no you, you don't have to that's just money making for them but they can be very beneficial, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So that's where I did sign up for them. I did hire some writers to critique my manuscript, to give me feedback on it, and which was helpful. But again, trying to find the right, right writer that believes in your subject matter was also kind of tricky for me. So I had one gal that um, was, I felt unbelievably rude. Every time I would talk to her, she would insult my writing and finally I said you know honey that's why I'm hiring you <laughs> if I was good at all of this I wouldn't need you and so I just felt like that was such a weird approach for her um, so needless to say that didn't work out and then I had I just talked to another writer and she didn't believe in what I was doing mm -hmm. and so 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 you've had a lot of close calls with death so you know and what does oh. that have to do with the spirit world she goes these are completely unrelated and she, it was just one of these things where you're like Thanks for your time. Moving on, you know, and so that's where it, it, it's a process. It, it's mm -hmm. really a process. So when you were going through all of the classes that you mentioned or the workshops, perhaps, and all, you already have an idea that you wanted to write about this particular topic or the the the. Did the writing oh, actually, when I started her. taking the classes, I actually had no idea what I was going to write about. It's just spirit kept telling me I need to sit in these classes. So I did. Yeah. So it was just all you know you, you try to learn how to do it first and then after you've gone through enough classes when was that point in time when you realized that you want to write about this topic and include your experiences and all that actually it was the very first day of the very first workshop i see the light bulb went on which again i take no credit for i totally believe that was orchestrated by spirit <laughs> so like honestly i didn't know why i was there let alone what i was going to write about so it just, as soon as the class started and they started talking, all of a sudden within the first hour or two hours, all of a sudden the download came in that this is what you're going to write about. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, okay. But then I realized, oh, I had been collecting pictures and videos of spirits mm -hmm. for a yeah. while. And I'm thinking, oh, I really have most of all the information and evidence already. So that's why once... I finally made the decision that this is what I needed to do. It happened very quickly. So it's like a light bulb moment for you that that's what the purpose of the videos are for, like your encounters with the orbs and all that and yep. the pictures and also, yeah. Yeah, okay. then I realized why it was all happening and how I was able to do it and why Spirit's allowing, why they're showing up for me. Mm. So you given us a lot of anecdotes about you writing the book and your experiences with all of those writers helping you and all that what was the most fun part in the whole process oh that's such a great great question i think some of it is i shared some of the unique readings i've given my clients i think that are super special mm -hmm. I, I i loved remembering those and adding those to the book but honestly i think the funnest part for me was going through my pictures and videos and collecting more evidence to put in the book. Um, I just love it. I just love seeing them. I love that they're always around and I love that they'll come when I call for them. So I, it's really a lot of fun. And I think people that will see them in the book will, will see that. In fact, may I share with you? One of the yeah, pages? sure. Go ahead. You can show us some pictures. Yeah. So I have, I put in the beginning of the book, there's over 70 really mm -hmm. interesting pictures in the book. And here are just a few of them. So to me, that's a whole lot of fun because a lot of them have real stories to go with them. <laughs> and it's all in the book. You share that in the book, right? Like, for example, there's a picture of an orb and you tell us the yeah. story behind it. A little bit. Some of them, yeah. Some of them I do. Others, I just explain what camera what device I used to capture the evidence because in the book I have a whole tutorial section too that I put in here it's the bonus section in the back of the book that literally tells you how to do it the process the procedures all that type of stuff so um, so people can take their own photos do you need like a special camera for that or actually you don't 
Actually, actually, you don't. You can just use your your cell phone. That's interesting. I'm sure a lot would want to try it out. Okay. So if that's the most fun part, what's the most difficult or the most challenging part? It was reliving the painful moments that I've gone through. You know, I've, I've lost my daughter, lost my father, lost other family members, lost friends. So some of those I put in the book. As a medium, when I'm meditating, sometimes people that I care about and I know, if they're ill or in the process of passing, they'll appear for me. And mm -hmm. so it's bittersweet. So I talk about some of that in the book. You know, it's, it's painful to relive things like that. But mm -hmm. I thought it would be really beneficial to other people that would be experiencing something similar. So number one, they know they're not alone. And number two, somebody else has related to the same type of situation as them and, and to give them hope. You know, when, when we're going through something horrific, a lot of people can be scared, right? dying, because they think that's it, lights out. And it's not, it's not at all. This is just one flip on the map. Our soul lives on for eternity. And so we might live for 50 years, even 100 years here on earth, but that's really just a flash in the pan, right? It's over so fast. So that's where if people could just understand to live their best life, right? Live it to the fullest because it's going to be over before you know it. So yeah, I understand that's going to, it's, I understand how difficult it might be to, you know, to remember all of those and try to relive it because you would have to tell the story again in your book, right? And you're not just writing it in the book once, right? You're writing and rewriting and then your editors might come back and, you yes. know, ask it to modify something. And so now you've got to relive it every single time you read it. You're, it just brings it all back to the surface, right? But now I have a better understanding about why I've experienced all these things. Um, they have made me better equipped when I'm giving my clients readings when I can relate to their level of pain and to what they're going through. So I, I get the big picture now, but when you're going through it, you know, it's for some of it, you just don't even want to live through. You just want it to stop. Right. Yeah. But knowing that, you know, it, it, it's part of our soul's journey mm -hmm. and that we signed up to endure these things, you know, it does help to a certain degree. And I think people will find that, in my book right so now that your book is out I'm sure you've had a lot of people tell you the experiences while they were reading the book and all that can you tell us about let's say the feedback that you get about your book what's the nicest feedback that you ever got from your readers two distinctly different types of feedback which I cherish it all honestly I've, uh -huh. I've we see some really lovely comments, which is really heartwarming, especially when you pour your heart and soul into it. You know, it's it's nice that other people appreciate it. I had one guy, he his business is paranormal investigations. Mm -hmm. And he took my spirit photography presentation in my book. And then he let me know that he has employed the techniques that I taught him. And he says it has taken his research and and discovery process and his ability to capture the evidence to a whole new level and mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was really really great because here's somebody in the business paranormal investigating kind of business and uh, he was interested in it and it's really helped him so I thought that was really cool I had a gal write a beautiful review on Barnes and Noble and I'll just read a little part of it if, if yeah sure go ahead yeah it was just lovely. It was really so sweet. She says, I was truly fascinated with this book. I found the history of our experiences in the spirit orb world very enlightening. She outlined her connections with death, specifically examples of orbs, spirit connections, etc., which kept me truly connected with her writing, and I couldn't put it down. There is no death found answers to my questions and put light to my experience that I've had. Her book and the love she wrote it with was captivating. I will definitely purchase any further future books she writes. It was a great way to find an author who loves, believes in what she's writing, and only wants to share it with her readers. This book I am highly recommending. So I thought that was so sweet. Yeah, very touching. Well, I love the part where she says that, you know, she couldn't put it down, but yet mm -hmm. um, she say she was captivated, but it also helped answer some of the questions. And, and ultimately... So that's the goal of your book, to make people understand. You know, yes, exactly. Things that you exactly. talk about in your book. 
Yeah. So for someone who is just trying to start writing a book, what advice can you give them? Do your research. Do your <laughs> research. I started with an outline, right? Mm -hmm. When I finally decided, yeah, I guess I'm doing this. Then you got to, you know, start outlining, like, what are you going to put in the book? Mm -hmm. And then out of those type of chapters or, you know, subject matters would turn into chapters, then what would that all encompass? Right. And then trying to find the best path forward. Uh, the best advice I think I received from several different outlets actually was is to write it as though you're speaking to somebody over a cup of coffee. Don't treat somebody like they're an idiot and they can't comprehend. And don't talk over their heads. You know, mm -hmm. I've actually read a lot of different spirit orb type books where they were all these round orbs, you know, and all very traditional. And one was just about her, her son and his passing and how she thought every orb she's seen were her son, which was really sweet. But it's far more than that, right? So it, you have to really research and, and determine what you want to put in there and come at your own unique angle, right, for it. And just be yourself, your genuine self. And if somebody doesn't like the way you wrote it, trust me, the publishers, if you go that route, will, I'm sure, advise you and want to rewrite it for you. But at least get your thoughts down, right, mm -hmm. and then work through them all. Word count's such a big thing. And that's probably the most stressful part for a writer is... Mm -hmm. You know, most books want to be 35 to 65,000 words, right? You know, ideally no less than 45,000. I'm thinking I'm a little less than that, but I've got a lot of these pictures in there. So, you know, there's a lot of milestones and things you've got to keep in mind when you're writing a book. That's where I encourage people to take some writing classes because mm -hmm. this is where you're going to learn all that. I think what you're trying to say is you have to connect to your audience. When you said that you have to talk to them, like you're just having a cup of coffee with them. Yeah, I think that's a very, very, you know, that's a very, very good advice. I mean, with the kind of subject that you have, some books tend to be a little too technical or, you know, quite difficult to understand. So that's a good approach to, you know, get to the level of your audience and, you know, make sure that you connect to them. Yeah, there was one book I wrote that somebody wrote. He was a college professor and the other mm -hmm. guy was somebody in, you know, the religious order. And mm -hmm. everything they wrote was quantum physics and all this stuff. And it's like, okay. I mean, they even have mathematical equations on some of the pages. And I'm thinking, that yeah. oh, wasn't for me. I was like, that was over my head. I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure who you wrote that for, but it wasn't for the layman. So that's where I'm like, yeah. No. How much more for, you know, people who don't really know much about it, right? I think the way you presented it, plus your experiences, coupled with your experiences that you shared with us, that makes the book even more relatable to just everyone. So as a teacher and all that, can you share with us your professional goals or personal goals for this year? Yeah, I really, my goal is to get the word out. There is no doubt. If I could get that book into everybody's hands so that they would have the opportunity to see the evidence. You know, mm -hmm. I do meet people every once in a while that are atheists. And they don't believe that there is anything after this world. And that's sad. It's really sad because I, I can't imagine what must go through their head when a loved one passes away or if they get ill or even thinking about their own end of days, you know, it, 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 because it isn't true. It, it's just not true. There is life. And there's a lot of videos out there about NDEs, near-death experiences. And I share some of those on my social media platform as well. If people want to hear right out of the mouth of an atheist. What happened when they died and where they went and the experience they had, I think will be enlightening. But that would be my ultimate goal is to, to get people to live their best life. I like to say that, you know, like I said before, our souls lived on forever. People just knew that their loved ones are still around them and they could mm -hmm. see the evidence. If they can literally see the evidence that their loved ones still are around them. You know, I, I tell people that come to me because most of them have lost somebody and they want a mediumship or reading to reconnect is you know, if you were like me, after my daughter passed away, I wanted to die. I, I, I prayed to let me die. Let me die. Just let my baby live. You know, take everything I have, including my life. Just let her live. You know, and I realize now, and other people should as well, if you're willing to die for them, you need to be willing to live for them because they're still around. And I gave a gal reading once where I brought in her daughter who had committed suicide. And this young lady came in every time the woman came for a reading, she came and finally her daughter in spirit let me know 
tell my mom I'm pulling back now. Mm -hmm. I said, what? And she goes, I'm, I'm pulling back. I'm not going to be around anymore. Like, I can't watch this anymore. She's been self-destructive ever since I departed. And it's all my fault. And I can't stand to watch this anymore. So she needs to understand if she's unwilling to get on with her life and to find joy and meaning again, then I'm leaving because I, I can't take this anymore. So I told the mom that. And six months had passed and her mother wanted another reading. And I said, no, you know, we're, we're, we're done. I, I've done all I can for you at this point. And, and she goes, no, no, please, please, just one more reading. I said, okay. And she came down from another city to, to meet with me. And uh, the minute she walked to my door, my goodness, her energy was off the chart. She was like, <laughs> this beautiful energy. And I said, oh my gosh, lots has happened. Come on in, we need to talk. And she goes, yeah. She reconnected. She found purpose in meeting again. And here's what you have to understand is they want to continue making memories with you. They mm -hmm. want to still go fishing with you. They still mm -hmm. want to go on a cruise with you. They still want, they will be there on those Christmas events and birthday events. They're very much part around, part, still part of your life. They're very much around. And then one day when you pass into spirit, you can talk about all these amazing things that you did together. But a lot of us get so wounded and damaged. We really can't see our way out of the dark room. Right. Right. Yeah. We just we can't find our way through the through the darkness to the light again. And so I'm really hoping that the book will do that for people. I really hope that they will read this and understand the big picture and that they really are not alone. Like healing. It, it, it can be extremely healing. I, I, this happens all the time, but just a real short story. I gave a gal a reading and she and I since I said, I see you sitting on the couch by yourself in the living room a lot. She goes, yeah. And I said, you don't need to be depressed. I, I get that you feel like you're alone all the time. And she goes, yeah, I'm just very lonely and you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, but there's always five to seven people in your living room with you. I can see it all. And she goes, what? I said, they're all standing around watching you. And she goes, well, how would I know that? And I said, so I asked one of the spirits and her friend and spirit said, well, I keep flashing the lights at her. In fact, that I'd do it in Morse code if I thought she could read Morse code. And I told my client that she burst out laughing. She goes, well, that would be my friend, Cheryl, or whatever her name was. And she goes, <laughs> I thought we were having electrical problems in our house. I was going to call an electrician. I said, no, that's your friend. So they're very much still around. That's very nice. So you must be, you must feel very blessed having this opportunity to connect to your audience and, you know, provide healing for most of them and all that. Do you see yourself writing another book? Like it can be the same topic or perhaps something related to it, perhaps, or totally different from what from the first book. Actually, there will be two more books. One of the books will be historical sites. And I have the ability to go to historical locations and connect with the people that were there at the time, like the Canton battlefield. I talk about just a couple of them real briefly in this book, right in the end of the book. But that will probably be the next book because I can go to these locations and have conversations with the deceased that were there, like on the battlefield or in the fort, Abercrombie and, you know, by Wapiton, Breckenridge. And so I... I can do those type of things as well. And so we'll write about that. And I also provide people with past life readings and they're fascinating. And mm -hmm. there's so much to that. People might not think it's a thing. It is mm -hmm. definitely a thing. In fact, I put a couple of brief stories on my website with at the bottom of the webpage are links to other stories that literally have been scientifically proven to be like accurate last life. there's just no other way a person could possibly explain them and this is not me telling a story these are documented things that have been on the history channel and stuff like that and so i think it'll be fascinating so that's two more books from you yeah that's yeah that's a lot to look forward to i'm sure your your fans and your readers will be very excited since they already mentioned that you know they've purchase another book from you as long as you write one. So what's your final message to everyone listening and watching us right now? Know that this life is just one drop in the bucket, right? It's just one of many that you've had or that you will have. Most of us have had dozens, if not hundreds or a thousand lifetimes. We are a product of those type of lifetimes. As an example, you know, if you just love Mexican food and you don't know why, but you want to eat it every <laughs> night of the week, 
it could be because you used to be Hispanic or lived in Mexico or Spain or something like that in another lifetime. Or if you have an unnatural fear of flying, right? Like you're just going to die in the plane. You're just going to, well, you maybe did in a prior lifetime. And that's why you have a fear of it in this lifetime. But I'll tell people, I do spirit photography presentations. I get hired by organizations to come and do presentations. And so if anybody's interested in learning more about that, obviously buy the book, but you can also book me for your events, which mm -hmm. I go into depth step-by-step step of the whole, whole process and share a lot of pictures and videos that people, I had one gal tell me, she goes, thank goodness I could turn my camera off. She said, because the entire time I was in your presentation, my mouth was like, I thought that was so adorable. She told me that. So right. So please invite them to reach out to you through your social media accounts and also through your website. Yes. And, and people can check out my website, crystalpeakmedium.com. I've got a litany of information up there, not only about myself, but the type of services I offer and, and, and a lot of things that I talk about, blogs and things like that, where it could answer a lot of questions for people. Also, check me out on social media. I'm pretty much on all the platforms. You can find me under Crystal Peak Medium. And I share weekly, sometimes daily information and pictures and videos that aren't in my book that you'll find on my website and my social media platforms only. Okay, so thank you, Suzanne, for thanks for telling us about Spirit Orb, showing us proof that indeed there is no death. So I'm sure that everyone is interested to see more and learn more. You can get a copy of Suzanne's book, There Is No Death, Evidence of the Spirit World, Spirits and Orbs at Archway Publishing Online Bookstore, as well as Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com and other online resellers. It's available in softcover, hardcover, and ebook. So thank you to all of our viewers and listeners. Thank you again, Suzanne. Until the next episode of the Author Roundup, 